You're listening to the Health and Happiness Podcast with Travis Kemper and Lauren Maxwell. Each episode, we share easy to implement strategies to improve your health, happiness, and overall quality of life. If you made a list of people that you trusted, would you put your name down? NF from the song Only. How's it going, Travis? Good. I was up the mountain yesterday doing some scouting. I had some dirt bike issues, so it was a little frustrating, but still a good day. <laughs> Yeah, it's finally cooled down here. The weather people have been telling us that it was going to cool down for like a month, um, at least a month. Every week, I or pretty much every day, I'd look and it'd be like highs in the 70s and 80s. And then those days would come and it'd be 93. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah, I don't know why I started looking at the weather, but I was just like, God, I wanted to cool down. Um, and yeah. I put trust in people that are not trustworthy. Uh, oh, look at that. <laughs> we're talking That's about trust fitting. today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were finally right this week, though. So we even turned the air conditioning off yesterday or Yay. Friday. And uh, yeah, so hopefully we can keep it off. Awesome. How's it, how's it going, Mom? It's good. It's a super busy week for me. Um, we had our big annual company meeting for... NRTA where I work this Friday, um, which is the one time of year that everyone from the company gets together to prep for the school year and go over changes and questions. I've actually come to really enjoy it because it's the only time I get to see so many of my coworkers all at once. With the nature of my job being like traveling out to rural areas and like that's what everybody does who works for the company, we really only get to see like the people we carpool with, which like for a lot of people, I don't even think they carpool with anybody. Like I'm one of the few who actually goes to a place with another person. So um, it's really nice to be able to catch up with some of the people I don't get to see very often. So it was like lots of hugging and catching up and talking. And um, it was probably a lot more social than it was productive, but <laughs> as it was, it usually was, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so much fun, so much fun, which is like weird for me to be like, Oh, we had like an eight hour long meeting and it was so fun, but it was so fun. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yeah. Well, movies. well, it like starts with CPR and then we do our like early intervention group meeting and then we do the PT meeting and then we do like the big company meeting after that. So it's like a lot of. That's things. nice that they get the CPR out of the way for everybody. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. Yeah, it's great. Because it's a pain in the butt. Yeah, it just becomes part of the annual it's meeting day. Yeah, it's probably not as bad for you as it is for us because you have 10 times the population. It's a pain to get CPR certified. Really? Here. Yeah, it's oh, very dang. difficult. That's yeah, difficult. it's like once a month that you have an opportunity oh. if it doesn't all sell out. Oh. Yeah. It's, wow. It's not, well, it's our, not ideal. Yeah, our HR lady is the person who teaches the CPR. So she just does oh, nice. it like whenever anybody is about to expire. <laughs> cool. So cool. like we don't have to do anything. She's just like, all right, I'm doing CPR. You're coming. Okay, thanks. <laughs> cool. You there. Yeah. Anyway, what are we going to talk about today, Travis? So in the U.S., trust in others, according to Pew Research, is on the decon. 71% of people think that Interpersonal confidence has worsened in the last 20 years. So it would be trusting in your neighbors, trusting in, in your colleagues, everything like that. But our question today is not do you trust your neighbors, colleagues, or fellow citizens? It is do you trust yourself? And if you don't trust yourself, should others trust you? That's a powerful question. Learning how to trust yourself is the key to creating a healthy relationship with yourself as it fosters a deep sense of self-love, self-compassion, and self-confidence within us. But for a lot of us, self-trust doesn't always come so easily. Many people often struggle with issues of self-doubt that can lead them to sabotaging their own chances at happiness and success. So life and career coach Kristen Vieira defines self-trust as an individual's commitment to oneself to live a life in alignment with what brings us fulfillment and the belief that we are fully capable of reaching it. She defines self-trust um, as a broken down into supporting areas, including a commitment to self, self-compassion, and self-confidence. These three areas are all interconnected and strengthening any of these three also leads to cultivating one's self-trust. 
So commitment to self. Committing to yourself can differ for each individual, as everything pretty much does. Um, it can be getting in touch with your intuition or your inner guide, defining your values, questioning your beliefs, finding purpose, or removing outside influences to determine what sparks a light in your soul and pursuing this passion. In each case, the commitment involves an individual making a conscious decision to choose for yourself and oftentimes to choose differently. Um, to honor yourself in pursuit of what brings greater happiness or fulfillment. This commitment can also involve changing habits, reframing perspectives, changing the environment, or acting differently. Regardless of the commitment, it is made to yourself on the foundation of your beliefs, needs, wants, or desires. And then there's self-compassion. So self-compassion is another area that contributes to strengthening self-trust. Self-compassion is not just about the self-care practices and support. While those practices help, expanding your self-knowledge plays a vital role in building self-compassion. Self-knowledge is gaining a greater understanding of yourself, of your triggers, repeated behaviors, shadows, and underlying beliefs. It is expanding this awareness from a place of acceptance and learning rather than judgment. Then use that awareness to commit to yourself to choose to respond and act differently when faced with a repeated challenge or lesson. Your growth in self-knowledge allows you to practice more self-compassion. You can recognize patterns, forgive yourself for the repeated behaviors that no longer serve you, and choose how to respond moving forward. Lastly, there's self-confidence. Self-confidence <clears throat> also largely contributes to your level of self-trust. Self-confidence is, is an individual's belief in their ability to per persevere despite fears, obstacles, and challenges. It's an individual's moving from a place of I can't to I can and I will. It is self-assurance, faith, and trust that you are fully capable of reaching the desired result. In Tanya Peterson's article, What is Self-Confidence?, she states, Self-confidence, then, is the courage to know yourself, believe in yourself, and act on your beliefs. A definition of self-confidence is a positive feeling about oneself and the world that leads to courageous actions born out of a sense of self-respect. Those who are self-confident believe in their abilities and are empowered to take action. Confidence roots you in who you are. You'll be able to accept your weaknesses, knowing that they don't change your self-worth. You'll also be able to celebrate your strengths and use them more fully. Your actions will be in line with your principles, giving you a greater sense of purpose. You'll know who you are and what you stand for. You'll have the skills to show up, stand up, and speak up. In other words, you'll be able to let your best self shine through. Self-confidence is probably more important than you think. For starters, it leads to less fear and anxiety, greater motivation, more resilience, improved relationships, and a stronger sense of your authentic self. Self-trust can look like this. Awareness of your thoughts and feelings, expressing yourself openly and honestly, sticking to personal standards, ethics, and core values, knowing when you need to take care of yourself first, confidence that you can get through difficult times, and pursuing your dreams without letting others stop you. So what are some signs that you don't trust yourself? Well, looking through these signs made me very uncomfortable <laughs> because I didn't really think I didn't trust myself until I started reading over this list. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it's another episode. I feel like that we're just like taking some introspection here for me. <laughs> I told you before, I just, um, I, I create these episodes just like, huh. What would make Lauren uncomfortable? What would make Lauren uncomfortable? Or maybe you're just coming at it from, hmm, what does Lauren need help with that she doesn't know she needs help with? <laughs> yeah, that's not what I do at all, but that is what it feels like sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. So signs you don't trust yourself. You always second guess yourself. You have a hard time making decisions no matter how inconsequential. So like even the stupid decisions of like what color of water bottle do I want to get? Um, sometimes those are the hardest decisions that I've had to make. And I've had to be like, no one, what do you think? Which is black. dumb. Lauren, black. My God, I got this pretty blue ombre <laughs> color. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, you are paralyzed with indecision because you find the possibility of messing up all too real and too likely to happen. You feel overwhelmed when you have too much freedom because you lack the confidence to stand by your decisions. You also can overthink everything. Uh, this is something I do a lot of the time. <laughs> overthink everything. Once you finally do make up your mind, you immediately start wondering if you made the right choice. And often more, more often than not, you start seeing all the reasons why you should have gone with the other option instead. You are prone to feeling lots of anxiety, guilt, and regret over the things that you do and overthinking all your actions because you don't have enough faith in yourself to do well and succeed. You can postpone making decisions and procrastinate as you find as you find it easier to sit with uncertainty compared to the fear that you made the wrong decision. All right. So a bunch of those were about decision-making mm -hmm. and I don't know where I got this from, but I, I, I know I got it from somebody else. I didn't come up with this. Uh, <laughs> some podcast book, something that I was re reading um, probably a couple of years ago talked about just getting rid of stupid things that you have to decide on. And one of the things that I've been working towards is having all the same clothes. So in other words, I wear the same shirt every day. Of course, today is one of the days, if you watch the video, that I have a different shirt on than my normal shirt. But normally, I wear the same black shirt, says Defiance PT, every day. Um, and I'm working on that for my uh, work clothes as well. I'm buying the exact same pair of pants with the exact same shirt. It doesn't have any logo on it. It just makes life easier. So it's one decision that I don't have to make because it's like shirt, pants, that's it. Yeah, you're minimizing that indecision fatigue. Right, exactly, exactly. Decision so, fatigue. I don't know if it's the, decision I think, fatigue or I think indecision. it's decision fatigue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I was going to let it go. Mine's just more indecision, I guess. <laughs> That's personal, I think I think that's statement. why you I think the indecision is why you get decision fatigue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. But anyway, so just an idea for people that that struggle with that stuff, like picking out a water bottle and something like that. It's like, okay, well, it's very simple. I buy the same thing. Shoes. I buy the same shoes every year. I buy three pair of shoes: a pair of hiking shoes, two pair of running shoes. They are the same shoes that I bought last year. I don't even go to the store to try them on anymore. I know that specific A6 models are great. I just get their new model. And uh, my hiking shoes are Merrill Moab, I don't know, high or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. So yeah, just things idea. like that that make my life really easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have the same breakfast and lunch every day. There you go. And that's part Good of job. how I minimize my decisions, especially on work mornings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very nice. But I don't need to do that. That was a good idea, Travis. Thanks for thanks for adding that in there. I didn't didn't think about that at all. Um, some other signs are you avoid tuning into your needs and desires and disconnect instead. You trust other people's opinions more than your own. So you are easily swayed by the opinions of others and can't make a decision without asking for their input first. Like when I asked Nolan, what color should my water bottle be? <laughs> so, <laughs> say for example, you wanna buy something you've had your eye on forever, but because your friends tell you they don't like it, you change your mind. Gosh, that would never be something I would do. Uh... <laughs> So some other things that might be signs that you don't trust yourself. You ruminate on what could have been if you had taken another path. You compare your choices to others' decisions. You're afraid to speak up. I think this is probably a big one for a lot of people. Studies show that people who are shy and quiet also tend to have trouble trusting themselves, which is what makes them afraid to speak up. They don't like to be the center of attention. And they're not comfortable talking to a crowd or a group, even, even their own close friends, because they're afraid of being judged or ridiculed. You're trying to control everything. Lauren, to me, this seems incongruent with most of the list. Um, I can see why, because like, I don't know, if you're like, a, don't trust yourself, it seems counterintuitive to 
want to control it and like be in charge of it. But also like, I think it has more to do with just being like afraid of the unknown or afraid of like, like when things aren't controlled or under your control, then you don't know what to expect and you don't necessarily trust yourself to adapt to an unexpected situation. So you want to control it so that you know what's happening so that your your chance of success maybe is higher. I don't know. That's, I think, what I like to do. Like, I like to control things so that I know, I know exactly what's going on. Maybe. I think I understand. <laughs> yeah. This makes sense. This is when you're planning to do something and you have to have this in your mind, what is in your mind, a foolproof plan, like mm -hmm. nothing can go wrong mm -hmm. and then you never do the thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense now. Um, you may struggle to recognize your work. When you have problems trusting and believing in yourself, you undermine your own success and belittle your own accomplishments. You struggle to see all the great qualities that you have and contributions you've made because you fail to recognize your own self-worth. You're overly critical of yourself. You beat yourself up over your shortcomings and find it hard to forgive yourself for the things you have done wrong. You dwell on your past mistakes, mistakes and find and often find yourself grappling with self-doubt because you don't trust yourself enough to be more understanding with your own flaws and weaknesses. Lauren, now that we explored what not trusting yourself might manifest like, what are some reasons that we don't trust ourselves? Yeah, so fear of making the wrong choice can be a big reason why we don't trust ourselves. People who are not attuned to their own feelings and needs tend to regulate themselves based on the perspectives of others. Underlying their lack of trust in themselves is the fear that they will make the wrong choice and a lack of confidence in their own ability to do what is best for them. They also tend to create a false dichotomy of a right and a wrong decision. They simplify decisions through this black and white lens to create an illusion of control instead of recognizing their own ability to thrive in various situations and to navigate adversity if a situation does not go as planned. Typically, people who don't trust themselves and find it difficult to make choices tend to struggle between two equally positive options. The struggle is less about which decision would be best for them and more about their lack of confidence in their own abilities. Um, you can also have a hard time trusting yourself due to past events and present habits. So people who have made poor decisions in the past or experienced emotional abuse that makes it hard for them to believe their own self-worth may get into the habit of second guessing themselves and seeking others' opinions and validations to help them make decisions. While this may help them feel like they're safe and in control, it can get worse over time as they become further disconnected from their needs and instincts. I mean, essentially like the issue here is like you learn to shut off or not listen to like anything that you think and just More. Really solely rely on other people. Yeah. And then you're not in control of your life at all either because mm -hmm. I'm yeah. doing what you tell me to, is best, not right. what is best for me. Right. So what is the impact of not trusting yourself, Travis? <laughs> not trusting yourself can take a toll on your physical and mental health. I feel like this is not surprising at all. Nope. People who struggle with trusting themselves tend to experience elevated levels of anxiety, depression, and guilt. People who find it difficult to trust themselves are also prone to sleep difficulties as they may tend to ruminate over big and small life decisions at night before they fall asleep when they are unable to seek reassurance from others or distract themselves in other ways. Lauren, I hope that your water bottle did not keep you up at night. <laughs> No, not my water bottle. Oh, good. <laughs> Other things, maybe, but not, maybe not that one. <laughs> the, the stress and anxiety caused by uncertainty can take a toll on physical and mental health, eventually leading to conditions such as impaired memory, heart problems, and diabetes. Lauren, <laughs> that's a pretty compre comprehensive list of signs and consequences of not trusting yourself. But the most important part of our podcast is how can somebody that is 
listening to this and saying, I have those problems. And maybe I even have the anxiety and depression and guilt and I can't sleep. How can they start trusting themselves and building trust in themselves? Yeah. So one of my favorite tips is one that we've talked about a lot on this podcast, which is to set reasonable goals. Setting goals that are too ambitious can have a major downside. When we don't reach our big goals, we experience failure and failure and failing can often reduce our self-confidence and ability to trust ourselves. Instead of setting one big goal, try setting many little goals that put you in the direction of your big goal. Doing so will make your big goal more realistic. You'll also gain confidence and trust in yourself while accomplishing the smaller goals along the way. Give yourself compassion. Um, another one I think we've talked about a lot on this podcast and something I think I always constantly need to be reminded of. Um, be kind to yourself. Transform your inner critic into a compassionate friend. When you hear yourself in a cycle of self-doubt and criticism, take a moment to respond like you would with a good friend. When you notice yourself thinking, I don't trust myself, I'm afraid I'll get it wrong again, respond with, hey, this is hard. What do I need to get through it? Developing that kind of self-compassion will set the pattern going forward to shift from saboteur to supporter. Give yourself permission to do something just for you every day. Another one would be embracing vulnerability. So my one of my favorite people, again, I've talked about her on the podcast, Brene Brown. In her TED Talk, Listening to Shame, psychologist and researcher Brene Brown said that people often look at vulnerability as a sign of weakness. But when you hide your vulnerabilities, you never let anyone know the real you. Um, and that could be another reason why like, it's easy to not trust yourself because you're not trusting other people with who you are. And then you're like basically telling yourself that you know, people don't want the real version of you, which makes you feel less worthy and could just feed into that pattern. But Brene suggests that reframing, oh, she suggests reframing vulnerability. Look at it as an act of bravery rather than an imperfection. When you allow yourself to be vulnerable, you let your guard down. You give other people the signal that they can also let their guard down too. Being authentic and showing vulnerability builds strong relationships and true connections. As, so, as social creatures, we need that sense of connection to feel secure and confident. Some more strategies. Enforce your personal boundaries. Personal boundaries establish acceptable ways for other people to behave towards you and how you will respond when people push those limits. This will help establish your personal power and ensure that relationships remain respectful, supportive, and caring. Listen to your thoughts and spend time alone. When you don't trust yourself, you might feel uncomfortable spending time looking inward. You might try to keep busy all day by constantly getting involved in activities or thinking about small things outside of yourself. Break the habit of looking away from yourself by patiently looking inward. One way to do this is with meditation. Try sitting in a quiet place for five to 15 minutes each day. Pay close attention to your breath and body. As any thoughts or, or self-criticisms pass by, acknowledge them and let them go. Allowing time for this important one-on-one -on -one with yourself can build up your self-trust. If you want to learn more about meditation and the benefits of meditation, check out episode 11, which we will link to in the comments. Express your authentic self and be you. Acting like a different person than you really are is a sign that you're lacking self-confidence and trust in yourself. Other people will be able to sense that. So how do you build up your trust enough to be yourself around others? When you start to feel insecure around others, remind yourself that it's okay to be you. Start by practicing around people that you feel most comfortable with, like your friends and close family. Take note if you feel vulnerable or uncomfortable and keep spending time with these people until your feelings of insecurity start to disappear. Know what truly matters to you. Picture your version of success. We talked about this on episode 25, which we'll also link to in the comments. <clears throat> Accept that you are not perfect. 
Practice honest communication. Noticing your thoughts and feelings acknowledges that they exist in the first place. Then you'll find it easier to communicate with someone calmly about how you feel rather than explode with emotion. A new brain imaging study by psychologists at the University of California reveals that verbalizing our feelings makes sadness, anger, and pain less intense. When you identify emotions and their triggers, you dampen the reaction. That's a really cool study. I need to look at that study. That might be a new episode. Yeah, I really like that idea. I think I've started started recently to see how beneficial that, that can be. Um, another tip is to use the trust model, which was created by Judith E. Glasser. Hopefully I'm pronouncing her name right. Um, so trust stands for transparency, respect, understand, shared success, and testing assumptions. So for transparency, be willing to be transparent. Tell the why behind the what. Um, for respect, see the capacity in the other person, assume the best, and use honorable language and actions. For understanding, listen to the reality of another person. Step under their umbrella of reality and look with an open heart. Shared success, co-create win-win-win scenarios. Strategize for mutual su success. And for testing assumptions, tell the truth and help to close those reality gaps because there can be two different truths for two different people. So like trying to find the common bridge between those two truths. Isn't that what communication is? Mm, yeah. Communication. <laughs> um, couple last tips. Tune into your needs and instincts. Start to become more attuned to your needs and what you want. When a big decision or situation arises, resist your initial inclination to immediately tell someone else and get their advice. Instead, sit with the situation and process how you feel about it and consider your options as well as the pros and cons of each potential decision point. Use positive visualization. Positive visualization can be a helpful tool. Many people who struggle with self-trust tend to utilize negative visualization, which means they imagine the worst possible outcome for their decisions, causing them to devalue their opinions and idealize the opinions of others. This sounds, there's a quote somewhere that's, um, that says I've had, I've experienced many catastrophic accidents or something like that. And they've almost all been in my head. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oof. It's a really sad quote, but it's so true. That hits hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's better than that when you actually, read the quote but uh it <laughs> it comes to the same conclusion yeah um so instead of imagining the worst case scenario imagine making a decision and visualize the best possible outcome for example if you're trying to choose between two different business schools imagine moving to an to each new city meeting new friends trying new restaurants walking around the campus and learning interesting topics if you were interested in learning more about the power of visualization check out episode 35 of this podcast <laughs> we talked about a lot of these a lot of these which is great yeah so a challenge for this week um start small as always say i'm going to do this tomorrow whatever this is don't say for example i'm never eating ice cream again if ice cream is your favorite treat that you eat daily instead say i'm not going to eat ice cream tomorrow then tomorrow, when you want your late night bowl of ice cream, start to build that trust in yourself by demonstrating that you have the self-control it requires to avoid eating the ice cream. I mean, trust in yourself is all about keeping the promises that you make to yourself. And that could be as, you know, as simple as one day, one step at a time. And if you hold yourself accountable for that one day, that one step, then that's a little bit more trust that you have with yourself and build forward on that. Yep. Yeah, it can be super tiny. I'm only going to drink three cups of coffee instead of four. Right, yeah. And that's easy to build trust in yourself because you're you're being impeccable with your word. You're keeping your promise. Great job today, Lauren. 
You too, Travis. This was fun. This was fun. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And we'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to listen to this episode of the Health and Happiness Podcast. We hope you enjoyed the episode and are getting benefits from our content. If your life is improving in part due to the information in this podcast, we would greatly appreciate you sharing the episode with your family and friends on social media and leaving us a review so we can continue to reach more people and improve the health and happiness of the community at large. Thanks again, and we will see you next week for another episode of the Health and Happiness Podcast.